Right now, I'm going to show you how to create an animation inside of Photoshop. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today I'm going to show you how to create an animation inside of Photoshop. So I'm going to teach you, first of all, the basics of how animation works and then we're going to take this picture I've got here of a jet and we're going to animate it and add a couple of cool little touches into it. And by the way, if you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, hit subscribe and like. Let's jump in. All right, so what I have here is three different layers. We look at the background layer here. This is a shot I shot out the window of a hotel in New York City. And obviously I've done a couple of things to it to just kind of make it look a little more interesting. Then we've got this jet. It's just a 3D model that I rendered out here inside of Photoshop. And then I have another layer here that I created, which is just kind of a little flame out the back for the exhaust. So we could kind of attach that to the jet for fun. So essentially what we want to do is we want to animate this jet from the top of the screen to the bottom. Okay, if we want to animate this, what we do is go up under window. And then under the window, we're going to go down to timeline. And you'll see this timeline here, and this is where we create our animation. There's certain things to see in here. Let's just close this up for now. This is our timeline. It shows a duration of time. Right now, it's only 15 frames. And if we click and drag our playhead, notice nothing is happening. We want to make this longer. Let's make it about five seconds. So what we're going to do is click and drag. And notice that now we can see the amount of time here. There's one second. There's two seconds. There's three seconds, so we want to make it five. So what we can do is we can make this shorter here. So this is not changing the speed or the duration. What it's doing is it's just zooming out so we can uh, play around and have a little bit more time to play with here. All right, so let's set that to five seconds. Now, if this playhead was to play, it would go through five seconds. Notice, though, when it gets to here, it disappears. And that's because the other two layers here are not all the way up to five seconds. So why don't we extend these? And now everything is set. So we've set the stage and let's just zoom in a little bit to make it easier to work with. All right, so here we have five seconds and three layers. Now we want to move these over time. So what we want to do is we're going to choose the beginning position. So I'm going to choose the jet and the exhaust and you'll see these are on separate layers there. See that? But let's drag them both up to the starting position. So we want this to start here. Just coming into the frame a little bit. All right. So what we want to do now is we want to move that jet from the top to the bottom of that screen over the course of five seconds. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So what we do is we're going to choose the jet layer first. Let's just click on the jet. Notice that that's selected. Notice it's selected here. If I choose a layer, see how they correlate? And then there's the background. So we're going to start with the jet. And let's twirl open the little arrow, and this is going to give us animation options. We have three options here. Position is where do you want to change it over time. Opacity is changing the transparency. And then the style is working, you guessed it, with the layer style. All right, so why don't we start with the position? So I'm going to turn on the stopwatch, which means now it's recording keyframes. You'll see the yellow, yellow diamond. That little diamond here is saying, hey, we've got a keyframe now. That means I've marked the beginning position. Now, a keyframe on its own doesn't do anything. All it's doing is marking something. And in this case, we're marking position and saying, this is where we're going to start. Now, the keyframe is a listener. It's listening, looking for another keyframe. And so it's not going to do anything until it finds another keyframe. And then when it finds a second keyframe, it's going to animate over time the difference between this keyframe and what's different in the other keyframe. I'll demonstrate. So we have keyframe one, which is our beginning, which is at zero seconds. And this is time on our timeline. We're going to move our playhead all the way forward to five seconds in time now. Now we want to put a second keyframe in a different position and then it's going to take it five seconds to go from the first position to the second. The first position is up here. The second position, now I'm dragging this jet. Notice as I do, a second keyframe appears. 
So now it's going, ah, okay. Let's take it a little bit further. And I'm going to take it to about there when it's just leaving the frame. Notice you can change the position and it's not going to create a new keyframe unless you move the playhead. So don't move the playhead until you've got your keyframe set up. Okay, let's see how this works. Look at that. So essentially what we've done is we've created a frame here. Imagine a frame by frame animation. And then I've created a second frame here. Photoshop has created all the in-between frames to give us this animation over the course of five seconds. So if I hit the space bar, we can watch this animate. Great. Now we want to animate the flame that's also behind the jet, the exhaust. So why don't we just twirl this up for now and let's open the exhaust. And once again, we're going to click on position. We know that that's starting there. Let's go forward in five seconds. We know we want to attach it to the back of the jet. With the exhaust layer selected, we can click our exhaust, look at that, and then just place it at the back of our jet. Notice a keyframe is created. And now we've got that, see that? All right, so I've got a basic animation. Let me hit the space bar and you can see how that's working. Okay. What if we want to do a little bit more with this? What if we want to have the jet starting off slowly and then have it suddenly accelerate? Can we do that? Of course we can. What we do is we go back under our jet here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have it go forward. Mm, I like it to about there. So that's going to about there. It's going to go slow. So we're going to add another keyframe. So we can force a keyframe by clicking here on that diamond. And now we have a keyframe. Now nothing's really going to change. It's still going to look the same if we play it. See that? Nothing, nothing has changed. And to make sure we're matching, let's go and do the same thing for the exhaust. With the exhaust layer, click on there. And now we've added a keyframe. Okay, so what's the point in adding this keyframe in the middle? All right, here's the thing. Remember, animation is nothing more than changing position over time. So if I'm going from point A to point B, and it takes me five seconds to get there, that's a five second animation. If I add a point in the middle, which is around about two and a half seconds, which is what I've done, is I know it takes two and a half seconds to get to that keyframe, and another two and a half seconds to get to the other keyframe, which is five seconds. There's no change in speed. But what if I move a keyframe? What if I'm going in that amount of distance, it's still in the same position, but now it happens earlier or it happens later? That's going to change the speed. Watch this. So if I take this keyframe and I move this to say here, notice what happens now. Now it's going really slow, but watch what happens when it hits that keyframe. See, it speeds up. And that's because we're still in the middle, but now the keyframe is not in the middle. So that means more time has passed for it to go from here to there. And if we travel the same distance and it takes more time, guess what? You're traveling slower. And because of that, that means now there's less distance here. So we're traveling less distance in the same amount of time means you're moving faster. Okay, so let's go down and we're gonna do the same thing with our exhaust. Let's click on our exhaust and let's drag that to that position now. Notice now it lines up. Before it wasn't because the exhaust was actually going faster than the jet. Now that we've lined these two up, let's have a look. Look at that, see that exhaust is on and then it speeds off. Now, one of the things I wanna do though is this exhaust is the afterburner. So I don't want the exhaust on until I hit here. Because when I hit here, I want the afterburner to kick in, which makes the jet go faster. Okay, so we can do that by using opacity. Let's go to the beginning, turn on opacity now, under the exhaust, which is that exhaust layer, take the opacity to zero. That now makes it invisible. Now, if I go all the way to here, 
and I turn the opacity up to 100, what it's going to do is it's just going to slowly turn that up over time. Watch this. See how that's just slowly fading in. We don't necessarily want that, do we? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back one keyframe. I'm going to apply another opacity. This time I'm going to take this opacity to zero. So now that means in this amount of time between the first keyframe and the next keyframe, there's no opacity. Then I go here and I turn it on and watch what happens. If I hit the space bar, now we've got the jet going slow. Watch this, the afterburner kicks in and it goes faster. All right, let's go and add another level of realism because right now it's kind of, we don't know how big it is. We don't know where it is in space. We just know it's kind of floating there because there's nothing there to give it a real world position or context. And we can do that by creating a shadow. And what I want to do now is I'm going to create a shadow. But what I'm going to do with this shadow is I'm actually going to make it a layer style. So let's go into FX and then let's choose drop shadow. Okay, so I want to create a shadow here from this jet. So what we want to do is change the distance. And by the way, we can just click and drag. And if I click and drag here, I can put this shadow there. Now I want to change the size of it a little bit, make it a little bit softer. There we go. And the opacity down just a little bit. There we go. So now if I'm to play this, we're going to have this shadow. Watch this. And because we used a layer style, the shadows with the jet. But what if we kick in this afterburner and we want to make it look like the jet is climbing? How do we do that? Well, quite simple. Let's go up under style. We're going to turn on style now. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the second keyframe right there. Now we're going to turn on the drop shadow. And what we're going to do is drop the opacity down a little bit because that makes it look like it's getting further away. Because if you look at a shadow, as the shadow gets closer, it gets harder edged and darker. As the shadow gets further away from the object, it gets softer edged and more transparent. Okay, so we've changed the opacity a little bit. Let's put the size up just a little, make it a little softer. And we can even increase the distance. Let's click and drag a little bit with the distance. Okay, click OK. Let's have a look and see what's happening. See how that shadow is starting to change? We can make it even more dramatic if we want. Let's go and make it more dramatic. So we're going to double click. Okay, make sure we've got our style. Let's double click on our drop shadow. Let's make it even more transparent and see how that looks. And notice I can just test this by scrubbing in the timeline. And see how now that shadow is getting softer and more transparent as that jet's climbing. Let's have a look here. Let's play it through. And you can kind of see that happening there. Now, if you wanted the jet to make it look like it was going a little bit higher, you could drag the jet up, of course, by just simply just clicking and dragging there on the jet. And let's also do that with the exhaust. Now watch this. Hit the space bar. Is the jet flying slowly and now it starts to accelerate and climb away. We could go even further with this and why don't we? Because one of the things that happens is the jet has a heat behind it. So we want to have some kind of a heat signature. Let's create that right now. So the way to create a heat signature is I'm going to go here. Let's just go to the middle somewhere just so we can kind of see it. And actually let's move forward just when the jet's getting off the screen that will be good about there. Okay, what we want to do is we're going to duplicate that background. So just hit Control J, makes a copy of it. And now we're going to apply a filter to this. So let's choose filter. And then we're going to go and we're going to give this a ripple kind of a look. So we're going to go into filter, we're going to choose to distort. And why don't we give it a ripple? And this is going to be like a heat signature coming behind the jet. So let's increase that ripple. Let's make it pretty strong. We could change the size of it. Small is probably not good. Mm, let's go medium. And if we click OK, this is the heat signature behind the plane. 
The problem is we have the heat signature across the whole photo. We just want to have it going behind the aircraft. And we can do that by using a mask. So why don't we hide it with a mask? So we're just going to hide this entire layer, hold down the Alt or the Option key, and create a mask. Now the reason I held the Alt and Option is it creates an inverted mask, which is black, which hides the contents of that layer. Now we just want to have a little bit of a heat signature going behind the jet. So we're going to click that mask. We're going to hit the B for brush. And let's make sure we got white for the foreground. Just grab a soft brush, 100% opacity. And then what we're going to do is I'm hitting the right bracket key to make, the, make it bigger. I'm just painting in a little bit of that heat signature. Let's make it even bigger so it fades a little bit behind that jet. So now we have the heat signature, but we need that to follow, follow that jet. Cause right now, if we fly, you know, notice it's just going there and that heat signature just comes on there. We want this going the entire time. Okay. How do we do that? Well, let's go to the end. Let's scroll down. Here's our layer two copy. This is the one we're going to be working on. Now notice this has got a little bit weird. It's okay. We just want to make sure this starts at the beginning. So just click and drag this across. There we go. Make sure we've got our five seconds there. Let's increase that. Great. All right. So we've got our five seconds. And if we scroll up here, the exhaust is still in the same place. We're just setting this up. Okay. What we want to do now is we want to just animate this. So what we want to do is unlink that layer mask and now we're going to click on the layer mask and notice here we've got layer mask position so we're going to turn on layer mask position also notice we're starting at the end frame so we're going to work backwards with this animation so there's the end let's go to the beginning and you know why i don't want it to kick in until the afterburner kicks in so we don't need the heat signature until this kicks in. Then it's really going to pick up its heat. All right, great. So why don't we move the position now? We're going to take that layer mask. And we're just going to drag it up. Notice where it is now until it's behind our jet. There it is. And let's have a look at that. So let's just scroll down a little bit here. And we can see there's our heat signature following the jet. But notice it disappears here. It just sits there static because we haven't animated that part yet. So let's go to the very beginning. And we're just going to just scroll this just to put it in position. So we're just dragging that heat signature behind that plane. And now if we look at it, it should more or less be following it. There we go. That's great. So what I want to do is let's have a look at this first of all with this heat signature the whole way. Let's hit the space bar and watch it. And then it kicks in with the afterburner. So I don't want it to kick in until the afterburner. So let's go down here. And we're on this layer here and we're working with this background layer. What we're going to do is go back here. We've got our opacity set at 100. This is our second layer here. We want to click on opacity. We know our opacity set at 100. Let's go back one frame, drag the opacity all the way to zero. And now that's not going to show until we get here. Now the heat signature is going to go on as the afterburner kicks in. So let's hit the space bar to play it. There's our jet just flying. Afterburner kicks in, ripples there, and notice to that that shadow changes. All right, when we're ready to export this as a video, what we do is go up under File, Export, Render Video, then we're just going to choose the location, give it a name, and the default settings here look pretty good. We've got Adobe Media Encoder. You've got two options here. Let's just choose that. 
H.264 is great, high quality, and the document size. Now there are presets if you want to go under here. You could go down and you could find something like a YouTube preset or something like that. So if I wanted to do it that way, I could. In this case, it's vertical, so it would work nicely for Instagram stories or something like that. Or I could just letterbox it if I wanted to put it inside of YouTube. And that will just automatically do that if I choose that setting there for 1080. So that's all you got to do and then just click render. And this will render the video out and make the video for you. Then when you're done, you just play the video and there we go. All right, guys, so there we go. We've just gone from very basics of animation all the way through to a little bit more advanced to add some realism in your movement inside of Photoshop. Now, I've got a question for you. Um, have you guys done any animations in Photoshop before? Were you even aware that Photoshop could do animations? Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments underneath. And by the way, if you guys are new here, hit that subscribe button. You'll become part of the cafe crew. Also turn on all notifications so you'll know when I upload a new tutorial, which is every single week. And also right now, while we're going through the coronavirus, every Thursday I'm doing a live stream. It's Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time or California time each day. Uh, tune in with us. It's the beginning of April right now, at least till the end of April. I'm going to be doing these. Uh, I'd love you to come and join us at here on YouTube at the Photoshop Cafe channel. Anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.